Yes. Uh, now we are recording. So welcome everyone uh, to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Meeting. We are the 24th of May 2022. Today we have on site uh, Lemur, Stéphane Merle, and Hyde Emma Duportal, and we have Mark Wait. Okay, so let's get started with the announcements. First of all, the weekly. So successful. Yes, 2.349 has released and the release checklist is complete. Um, and the, the image is okay on our side and we are waiting to fix uh, shell library bugs before delivering to infra CI. Okay, so no problem whatsoever. Do you have other announcements, Mark? No, none from me. I don't either. Um, Worked a no incident, so we can proceed to the notes. So, about the task that we were able to close on the past issues. So, what we worked and is finished and delivered and doesn't need any rework. Um, first of all, we are now using Docker Community Engine on the Azure Virtual Machines for Windows containers. That wasn't emergency, but uh, thanks to Tim Yacomb, we know that it, uh, by default, Azure is gonna stop updating the Windows server uh, images on Azure because their partnership with Mirantis is gonna stop. And we were using the result of that partnership by default, which is Docker Enterprise Edition. We don't need these features. So our process is now building and installing Docker using Windows uh, core version with the community edition. Uh, no versioning. Uh, it's the same way like we do on the Ubuntu images. We use the latest version. We could version, but that's we don't see a, a reason for doing that right now. Uh, it works very well. And that's also opened a side effect, which is not part of the team priority, but now we have a first version of the Windows Server 2022 images. So the next step will be to test these images next to the actual Windows Server 2019. Second task close, um, Windows Virtual Machine Agents were slower and available on CI Jenkins IO during the weekend. There was an incident that has been fixed. I don't remember the issue, but it was quite straightforward. Uh, that was, was there an Amazon crash from uh, the VM to the nodes? No, it was a uh, Azure, pure Azure issue. I'm looking that to remember. Um, there were some issues. So I've tried to document the diagnosis, the troubleshooting process. No logs on Jenkins side that were useful, except I failure to deploy the virtual machines. Um, but on Azure side, there were error, useful error. Ah, the disk size. That's a side effect of the previous tasks with the new Windows server. Is that with the new templates, base image that we're using, you need 127 gigabytes, which is the default. And we were using 90 gigabytes. Uh, it was only on CI Jenkins IO. That fix was already in place since months on trusted CI. So just fixing that configuration item was able to solve the problem. The issue wasn't blocking the users, hence the slow. It was just uh, only scheduling virtual machine agent on Amazon and not on Azure, it was not a mix of the two. So we still have working workloads for our end users. Finally, uh, thanks, Mark. So we gave access to Vincent Latombe to the VPN. So, uh, initially, the goal was to allow him to trigger a release of the remoting. So the release of the remoting was another subject treated by Tim and you, Mark, as I understand. So Vincent closed prematurely the issue. Still, uh, I took on myself to give him the virtual the VPN access because Vincent is, a, is someone helping us a lot of time and we will need his help to troubleshoot the Kubernetes plugin uh, with Basil. So the VPN access was more than needed in that case. 
So that's all for the completed tasks, because we have a lot of long running tasks this time. Is there any question about this task, closed task, or can we go to the working focus? One, two, three, okay. Um, first one, permanent redirect. Uh, Jenkins is the way that I the former domain to stories Jenkins IO. Uh, Stefan, can you give us a head up? Um, yes, uh, we, we did, I did um, the Helm chart for the HTTP redirectors uh, that will uh, be able to handle all the redirection we want. And I uh, updated uh, Kubernetes configuration for, for prod KVTS to uh, handle that specific redirection, Jen Jenkins is the way that IO. Um, but we need now that the C name, uh, that's the redirection uh, DNS point as a C name on the, on the IP, on the domain, sorry, uh, for that public KVTS uh, to be able to handle that. Okay, so the redirection works if you use a custom OTC host. Yes. Uh, and we are waiting for Alisa, Gavin. I'm not sure. It looks like because uh, Alisa told us to see with you, Mark. And I remember that Gavin at some time was created the thing initially. So not sure who is the owner of the domain. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll double check with Alyssa. I believe she's actually the owner, but that's putting ownership of a domain into the hands of someone who isn't typically doing domain ownership. So let me talk with her. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll work it out and be sure that we coordinate how to make that transition. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I was, uh... it, by any means, if we can transfer the ownership of that domain or at least the DNS zone to Azure, that would be easier because we could manage it if possible. But if not possible, oh. one C name should be in it. Well, and, and that's good. So, no, prefer to change the ownership to Azure so that infra team can maintain it. And that that is that is the right thing for us to do. Uh, I don't recall who it is that she purchased it from originally, but it should be feasible to transition it. I just don't know what all the steps are. Exactly. Don't hesitate to ask uh, if you need help in that area as soon as we have one access. Um, sounds good. So almost almost closed. Uh, next step is giving access to Bazil. Since this is uh, an internal cloud, this process uh, there isn't a detailed status on the issue. Uh, I sent in the information and I'm waiting uh, for feedbacks from him. I didn't have, but I only sent it yesterday or two days ago. So uh, it took me some time. So no expectation there. Um, I propose for the next iteration that we don't keep that issue and we wait for Basil to give us feedback. If we get feedback, I will put it back on the next uh, iteration. Otherwise, we let him uh, rot somewhere until Basil is able. Uh, Hervé, we have the auto notify people based on service routing rules. I assume we didn't have time. No, I have to work on it. Uh, still, is the same problem uh, okay. as I can't notify uh, a team. It's uh, right, uh, so team name has raw commands, so it's not interpreted by GitHub to ping the, the team. I have to maybe combine uh, two GitHub actions to get what I want. Okay. Um, okay. Are you, do you think you can work on it next week, or should we put it back to the backbone? Uh, I, should have time to open it. Okay, so we'll keep on for next week. Mirrors Jenkins IO. So um, we had an incident uh, last Friday when we changed the C name for the mirrors to the new machine. So mirrors successfully switched to the get Jenkins IO. It worked. We didn't hear from any issue in that area. However, we had a side effect. The domain update.jenkins.io was C named to mirrors Jenkins.io. And the TTL of the DNS was one hour. So during one hour, we had to wait uh, with broken update center everywhere until the DNS went back to the original machine once fixed. So sorry for the impact for the people used on that area. And we will have to take care. 
but it works very well. Um, the mirror, the mirror bits is now the only mirror system. It seems to work very well. We didn't see a big peaks in changes. So the next step for the upcoming iteration will be uh, cleaning up the puppet code, ensuring that there isn't any upcoming request to the actual virtual machine, and then converge, remove PostgreSQL, mirror brain, the virtual host, and put it on the puppet management again once mirror brain is removed. That means that that machine will switch from three features to two features, which is a good thing for us for the management. So still work in progress and going to work on that in the coming day. No question? No. Um, Digital Ocean, they went back to us. Uh, Hervé and I are going to take uh, appointment with them. They are interested in continuing the partnership, but they want to discuss feedbacks and evaluating the needs for the upcoming year. So we, were, we have to work on preparing ourselves on measuring uh, same rate as the rate we were burning money since the beginning of the sponsorship, if we keep the same size, and then uh, different scenario with uh, more and different level, so we can have an idea of the impacts. Yeah. And once that, we take appointment with them, and then we can get started again. They are ready to add us uh, in that area, but I personally assume they will ask us to another blog post or a case study or something else, which will be fair. Uh, given uh, they give us money. Ideally, if we could envision moving, uh, the goal will be trying to say, what if we stop using EKS? What if we stop uh, using Kubernetes cluster on Amazon and using only digital ocean? That's the scenario I will want to get as a baseline. And then we see if the cost is too much, then we can negotiate. But that will be a safe world for us. Because we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have to depend only on AWS for that part. Sounds good for you. Yes. If there are on any other ideas that we, you could use digital sound for, don't hesitate to uh, to get it. That's perfect. This is true. Cool. We can, for instance. Um, so work in progress. We have to take appointments. A minor administrative task and a bit of knowledge. Questions? Nope. Uh, Datadog, depreciation of on call handles in monitors. So, uh, the integration uh, between uh, PageWT and Datadog uh, seems to be working as uh, Arnold Heritier has received uh, alerts from PageWT. So, we will uh, only remove the uh, on call mention. Uh, which we received a uh, deprecation notice and see if we still receive a pager duty alert. And if not, we'll add it uh, mm. as we need, but uh, it seems to be correct at the, at, as it is. And our theory is that that integration was already done uh, before and we had both integration enabled because for each at on call deprecated uh, annotation, there is a twin annotation at page of duty, which is not deprecated. Since uh, we have the integration marked as already done in Datadog, it sounds like that uh, it's working because of that one. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Uh, the worst case is that by removing at on call, we we disable that feature and we cannot enable it again because it's deprecated. Because maybe it's deprecated, but still running for us. That's the thing we are not sure, so we need to be sure. So that's one to request away. And if everything goes uh, according to the plan, uh, then we can close that one. Uh, ready to have it on the next iteration? Yep. Uh, mirror in Singapore. So now we have all the information required. Now Runbook has to be written. Uh, we took the opportunity to, to meet with Olivier uh, today and he shared some information. We have some information on different areas and some are on code that we deleted a few months ago. So just have to dig. Uh, but the idea is that it's only finding the correct mirror URL to give to the people so they can airsync from. I don't know, Mark, if you remember, it's one of the two OCSL, but I don't remember if it's the CHI or the New York one. 
I'm not sure which, which one. Maybe we can send an email to OCSL. I'm not sure with the contact to ask them uh, how could we measure if we are not breaking one of these mirrors because of the daily air sync doing by all the other mirrors. Well, so, so shouldn't they be able to R sync from any mirror? They should be able to R sync from, from, I mean, it's, it's not a, they are truly intended to be mirrors of each other. So all we're doing is latency. So either of them is fine or the one in archives.jenkins.io or the one in Singapore or not Singapore, the one in China. I mean, any of them should be viable as mirrors, shouldn't they? That's a good point. So yeah, we tell them to are seeing from one of the mirror, the closest to the location of the list that we have on the mirror bit. That should, is, is my understanding correct? Well, I mean, it, it does introduce latency. If we could say, hey, our sync from some from the first one selected. And for me, either of the two at OSUSL is are, are quite good. So I'm not I'm not worried about which of those two is is faster. I would assume they're already getting lots of R sync traffic from plenty of people like me. <laughs> one more R sync consumer is probably not going to overload them. I hope you have multiple public IP <laughs> to avoid being <laughs> denied. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, no, I don't. And they have never denied me as far as I can tell. So, so OK, so run book, and then we can contact them. Uh, so Actually, maybe my mirrors are running from the St. Louis mirror. So I'm getting one from X Mission. But nonetheless, they've never rejected me either. <laughs> So, okay, to transplant to the next iteration and bodies and content. Okay, uh, next one is building our own Windows images. So, almost there. Yeah, um, I've got the image built and uh, tested. I have to, um, to use this uh, new image uh, in for. Uh, in uh, Jenkins Infra and uh, uh, in CI in, Jenkins IO. Well, yes. Okay. Yes. In, in more instance. Nice work. Um, we will have two test cases. Once it's deployed on release and Infra CI, that new image will be used for the upcoming weekly release. So next Tuesday. It's important to have this in mind. That's the Windows Server Core. That's literally the same image, so that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but that's the first step. And for CI Jenkins IO, uh, I mean, we have only have to be careful. Proposal is, are you okay if we do it only Monday since there is an upcoming long weekend? I would prefer avoid us delivering to CI Jenkins IO tomorrow and so risking breaking ACI builds for developers. I will test it this afternoon. This afternoon? Yeah, because it's uh, from exactly the same image yeah fair. as soon as they are published and we test fair. one build it it won't change later in the week so fair. either it breaks this afternoon and we wait monday to fix it or either oh. it pass and we are good what do you think we do it right after yep. so we can ask adrian since he's working yep. on some core pull requests yep. so we'll be able to test directly and give us a yes sounds good for Perfect. you stefan mark Yes. So almost done. The two next tasks are going to jump for the next iteration, but nothing to say. We didn't have time to work on the Oracle port. Uh, that's all. Maybe we'll start working on that later today, but we didn't have time. Um, finally, the two last ones, CI Jenkins IO. So I've published uh, the note from the postmortem and share the recording link uh, between the four, five of us, including Basil. So I need a review from everyone before publishing it and closing these issues. Uh, most of the action points have been done or we are waiting from Basil. We didn't add any, um, any issue on CI Jenkins IO due to rate limiting. Um, so right now, no emergency. That's a risk that still exists until we are fully uh, Unrate limited. Uh, so I propose that we just 
check that and maybe bump Basil because it looks like Basil is doing a lot of stuff. So I don't want to put pressure on him. So if he doesn't have time, just let us know and we should be okay. I think that's all. Yeah, do you have other things? Yeah, I was thinking about what I thought you were talking at the beginning. You know, we have a, a problem with the nodes not coming up on the, on the Kubernetes. And that was uh, uh, that was coming from Azure, no, from uh, Amazon, I think. They had the, uh, uh, I don't, you don't remember that? No. Well, I, I found the link that they were having issues uh, while we were looking for it. Ah, last week, the that Azure was, incident? That was before last week uh, meeting? I, um, I, I don't, don't remember I don't, exactly. I don't uh, remember what you had. Uh, okay, we'll check you later and open Sorry. a new desk if we forgot it, so uh, the knowledge will be shared. Um, one last thing, I haven't tracked it yet. I had an answer from uh, someone at Docker. So, uh, as you might remember, the Jenkins CI and Jenkins CI Infra and Jenkins Forever organization and the Docker Hub are um, open source and they are not rate limited. So I'm, I'm, I'm writing something on the Docker open source program issue. I will put it on the next iteration. Um, our end users are not API rate limiting. And that's a good thing. And that's why CI Jenkins IO is safe because Jenkins, uh, CI Jenkins IO only pull images in Jenkins CI infra slash. So no more uh, rate limit for these images since 10 days uh, uh, roughly. However, our account is still facing some time to times API rate limit when we have machines building all the Docker image for the Jenkins controller or agents because they, they build from official Docker images, which are API rate limits, most of the bandwidth. So makes sense for Docker to API rate limit this. We misunderstood that part. And I asked them what we could do about that. And they might have some team seats for us. So I've asked them two questions and I'm waiting for an answer. First one, is it okay to have two seats um, that, are, that have the extended API rate limit per organization, one for trusted and one for not untrusted, yeah. or pull push, or met, but two per organization. And the second question is, if we add these seats, we will go to four seats per organization, two humans and two technical accounts. Yeah. I asked if it's a problem because we should be limited to three. So can we raise the limit to at least five, just so we have multiple humans or technical or some more? Just one each time. Exactly. For the rest, the answer on everything. And I'm waiting for the answers. So we are safe for CI Jenkins IO, which is the root cause that broke it one month ago. But we are we we still have API rate limit issues that might slow down the Docker build images for Jenkins CI itself. I think that's all. Yeah. We have other topics that we forgot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mark, do you have other topics that we could have forgot or that we worked on? None, none for me. I did make a note in the announcements about the 4.13.1 remoting um, release. I had forgotten to mention that we've switched remoting all future releases from the main branch, from the primary branch, the master branch, we'll use JEP 229. We already have those releases. 4.13.1 is an exception because it had to be released from with the code signing and therefore had to be done on trusted. And so the change was surprisingly easy. It worked well, but if someone were to need to release some other old patch version, we would have to make a, a similar change there and then it needs more discussion. Okay. Thanks so I that. love that we switched to JEP 229. It means big big easy benefits that job can be shouldn't be removed from trusted but it can be ignored now we don't have to use it except for patch releases hmm. uh, nice 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 now about the infra next uh, release with the next 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 so i've put uh, two topics first one 
the crawler tools metadata generator. So he understands. I'm not sure my knowledge is quite limited, but it sounds like that that job, uh, the crawler, generate a bunch of files, static files, push somewhere. And when you are on Jenkins and you add the new tools installation, if you have an automatic installer, that plugin use the, the files to configure or to have the list of installer. Is my understanding correct, Mark? Your understanding is correct. The crawler, the crawler finds versions of JDK or versions of Maven or versions of Gradle or versions of choose your arbitrary tool and generates lists that are consumed by, that, by those things as JSON files. Okay. So it appears that since a few days, the builds on TransSTI for that uh, particular job, I still know the Jenkins infra, these builds are failing. The underlying reasons, so thanks Daniel for putting it, that, it's because in four weeks, there is a certificate that will expire. It seems mm. like the update center signing certificate, which is renewed once a year. Um, so we have to update it before June. I don't remember exactly the, yeah, 14 of June. So it's not emergency, but it's important. Mm -hmm. And there is a kind of a fail safe mechanism that uh, make that job failing for us. So good thing that we kind of notification, but we need to rotate that. So I propose to add that to the next upcoming uh, uh, release. Yes. And we have to ask or find information about how to renew that one between team, uh, Daniel, and maybe you, Mark. I don't know if you are at ease with that part. Um, what is uh, the, the thing is that we need to also add a calendar alert on that area because we don't have some. And so the calendar alert will the, show us the runbook. So between runbooks and there, we can act on improving that specific area for now. Um, so I propose to add that one for the upcoming milestone, if it's okay for everyone. Yes. Yes, uh, absolutely. Is there someone interested or can I pick it or? I can What do you think? I should be able to. Um, yes. Uh, I, I don't know what is the process. We can try. We have to, to look okay. around before. So okay. I will try if, if it's way too much, I will. Uh, Yes, that back to you. so adding it to Stefan um, for the upcoming one. There is also um, um, 29.45 uh, open by Basil. There has been a long discussion mainly about English semantic. <laughs> Sorry, um, it's Java 11 requirement for the infrastructure. Uh, I mentioned it. I don't think there are action for us right now. Uh, sounds like they are on the right, on whatever direction. Uh, the thing for us infrastructure is to follow up if they need something. I proposed we keep that because it sounds like there are a lot of different ways of doing that. I'm not sure that Basil and team have a consensual ideas on how to do it. Okay. So if it's okay for you, we track, we watch this one because it's important due to the dumping Java 8 in September. We will have an upcoming weekly for that. Um, so let's watch that one and see if they ask for help and mention each other and we'll try to take decision, the, all of us. Sounds good for you? Yeah, it's good. Mark, is that okay for you for the process? Yes. Okay. And I think that was the last element. So we already have a pretty packed milestone. I'm doing one last sanity check on the upcoming to see if I don't forget. Weekly release, key cloak, upgrade to cube, GC, AWS, oh no, it's only back burner. So it's only issues that are important. Oh, I've created to track deprecate EMG in favor of, the, of Docker. Yeah. Uh, that's the discussion. Uh, that one is an easy one. I uh, propose we add it to the upcoming. The goal is to build using Docker everywhere. So we will be able to dump EMG in the future. And then we will also switch uh, use container to Fox in the pipeline every area lab to your. Exactly. Can I add it to, yeah. is it okay for you to take it? 
Uh, it doesn't involve cleaning up EMG from the Docker image. It's only involved switching the pipeline library to Docker virtual machines by default. Okay, so that's all for me. Are there other topics that you will want? Thanks. Thank you. Good for everyone? Yes. So reminder, it's a long weekend for people in Europe. I don't know if it's the same for you in the US, Mark. It is, yes. Ooh. So expect some uh, less activity uh, for the upcoming milestone. And then everyone have a good week. Take care. Bye bye. Take some rest. Let me stop the recording. Um, mm -hmm.